We're going to conclude with a this or that as asked by a viewer. It's Audemars Piguet versus Vacheron Constantin Steel Sports Watch Edition. All right. Michael D., previously mentioned in this episode, asks, should I get a new Royal Oak Chrono Steel Blue Face or the new third generation Vacheron Constantin Overseas Stainless Steel with Blue Dial? He's leaning toward VC because of the in-house Geneva Seal movement, the larger size, and the quick change straps. He asks our thoughts. Let me give a quick rundown, and I'm going to let the man here decide, because he's the sports watch purist, not I. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 26331ST. Okay, 41 millimeters, 11 millimeters thick. Solid case back. Uh, this is a $24,300 watch. Holds its value nicely. Stainless steel, full bracelet. What you're paying for with this watch is th the thinness of it, the fineness of the Frédéric Piguet integrated chronograph movement, which is not in-house but is beautifully made, and you're paying for the finishing of the bezel of the case of the bracelet. With the Royal Oak, I cannot overemphasize, you're paying for the finishing of the outside of the watch. And the caliber 2385 is column wheel, vertical clutch, automatic, very thin, nicely made. It belongs in a watch at this price point. That said, 50 meters water resistant, and Vacheron Constantin has an alternative that is compelling. The Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph Generation 3 reference 5500 stainless steel, 42.5 millimeters, 13.7 millimeters thick. It is noticeably thicker than the Audemars Piguet, and it wears much larger, not 1.5 millimeters larger, but it comes with a bracelet, it comes with a rubber strap, it comes with a leather strap, and it has quick release lugs so you can swap them with nothing but your thumbnail. In-house caliber 5200, 54 hour power reserve, display case back, unlike the Royal Oak, water resistant to 150 meters and anti-magnetic. This is a column wheel chronograph movement you can see with Geneva Hallmark Jason. This watch is 30,300. 30,300 versus 24.3. Which watch do you take? I got to be honest. Uh, uh, it's a tough one. My heart says the VC. Um, it just it just makes all the sense. Uh, I I like the Gen 2 better than the Gen 3 personally, but if you look at you know if you line them up and you do all the all the points, the AP is in my opinion a prettier watch. I think you know, on the wrist it has more presence. But the VC, for what it is internally, um, it makes more sense. You're getting a little bit more bang for the buck, I would say. The secondary market on the AP is going to be a little stronger. The VC is my pick if you're just buying something to add to the collection. You're not worried about the secondary value. Now, let me ask you a question. I've heard that the market for the VC, ha as they've balanced supply better in the second year of, of the model line, that the third generation watch and steel, especially with the blue dial, has really taken off. Like, it's it's night and day, 2016 to 17. Is yeah, that true? It's it's a significant improvement, and I think um, that, you know, this is something that we'd, see a lot, we'd like to see a lot of brands do is really pay attention to supply and demand and how they distribute product and basically uh, where the secondary market goes. The Gen 3, there's nothing wrong with the watch. It's a fantastic piece. Secondary market has certainly improved on it. I personally prefer the aesthetic of the Gen 2, and I think that there's better deals to be had, obviously, since the watch, since the watch has been out a little bit longer. But, um, you know, the Gen 3 is a great watch, and, you, again, you're getting the bracelet, the rubber strap, the leather strap. Packaging's really nice, got the weird box. Yeah. You know, it's a cool watch. It's an amazing watch. I would say intellectually, it's almost like the this or that we started with. The Omega probably wins on the basis of technical refinement and an exquisite dial. Like if you were to just stack the features check by check, box by box, the Omega probably beat the show part at the beginning of the feature. And I think on paper, the Vacheron wins this battle just by sheer weight of features. But from an emotional standpoint, an elegant standpoint, an historic standpoint, uh, the Royal Oak comes roaring back. And let's face it, we buy what pulls our heartstrings. That's a gorgeous watch. And I think it's unanimous. It's the Royal Oak for both of us.